Hello world, this is your man Mark T. Welcome, Man Up with Mark T on DadsAndFathers.tv. Thankful y'all being here again this afternoon. Man, this is like my fourth show and I'm really excited to be able to do what I'm doing. I was thinking about something the other day and uh, as I was walking, I was walking and I saw a caterpillar. When I saw a caterpillar, I almost stepped on it. And I said to myself, I'll never step on another caterpillar again because a caterpillar represents potential. Whenever we see a caterpillar, we see that squirmy, wormy, inching, hairless creature that we take for granted. But we know that if we let the caterpillar progress sometime in life, it's going to form into something beautiful that we admire, that we look at, and we, we hold in a, a, certain type of, a certain type of respect. And that's how it is with us and people. Never step on anybody's dreams. A lot of times people aren't who we see and who, who they're going to be. So we can easily talk bad about them, discourage them, and not give them uplift. Instead of stepping on their dreams, inspire them. Because one day, they're going to be something. Eventually, they're going to grow up and they're going to be that butterfly. So never despise the day of small beginnings. Because an acorn was once, I'm going to take that. An oak tree was once an acorn. And so many times we take for granted that small little seed that grows into something great. So never step on anybody's dreams. Never give up on your own because one day you're going to be that person that people are going to admire and you can look back and remember when you were a caterpillar. But come back. we got a dynamic show. i got a dynamic guest like always. Thank you all for joining me. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back and get this thing started. Have you ever had a question related to child support, divorce, CPS? Call the attorney general or maybe an attorney and they just gave you a runaround. Where do you go to get help? Contact Dad's Fathers of Texas. Yes, they are child support specialists. Dad's Fathers of Texas can answer your question, help file paperwork, and help find a family law attorney. Dad's Fathers of Texas, making child support simple. Welcome back to Man Up with Mark T, the voice of victory. We live, y'all. You know, I always got to give a shout out to my people in Oak Cliff, Dallas, Texas. But I also have to give a shout out to my people worldwide because now we are on the internet and we're viewing all over the country. So thank you to my boy in Hawaii that's listening, Atlanta, South Carolina, North Carolina, San Francisco, Las Vegas, all the people that would touch my life and are constantly tuning in and viewing my show. So I appreciate that. So now without further ado, the man, the myth, the legend, my friend from the dirt of Oak Cliff, my man, Stephen Headache Smith, coming into the studio. <laughs> Headache, what's up, bro? You got it. Hey, man, I appreciate you coming out. For, you, for those of you who don't know him, my man grew up in Dallas, Texas. I had the real fortunate opportunity to see him play back in 1985, I think. And the scenario was I was supposed to take some kids from Hulsey Middle School to a basketball game with the Dallas Mavericks at Old Reunion Arena. So while I'm sitting there, before we got a chance to see the Mavericks play, we had to watch an eighth grade middle school basketball game. So as I'm watching basketball, I'm sitting there and I'm seeing this kid and he dropping threes. I mean, just unconscious. And everybody was hollering, headache, headache, headache. So I'm thinking that they're calling him a headache because he's giving the other teams a headache. But as I grew up and I watched him progress, it was this young man at the age of 14 shooting a three like he was born to do it. And I had an opportunity to watch his entire career and become very close friends with him. So it's an honor for me to have him in the studio with me today being a part of my show. I mean, to be honest with y'all, I'm really cheating because I know the story. But what I want to do as a part of my show and what my show is intended to do is inspire, inform, and uplift. And I want to have the opportunity to tell his story so that somebody out there, some young basketball player, some young father, some young man can see his story and be inspired, informed, and uplifted by the journey that he's taken. Headache, what's going on? You got it, boy. Now, like I said, you from Oak Cliff, but actually you from Pleasant Grove. Yeah, born, I was born and raised in South Dallas, then moved to Pleasant Grove, and 
and that's where you made your name. Yep, Greedy Grove. Yeah, and, and it ain't always pleasant in, in, uh, in the Grove. Huh? <laughs> so I mean, so you cha you face some challenges. Yes, sir. You know, growing up, and you know, I don't know if if your mom adopted me or if I adopted your mom, but you know, I love your mom, and you were raised by a single parent. Exactly. You know, so tell us about that. Tell us about you growing up, and you know, and all of that. Uh, well, you know, it was kind of tough, you know, being the only child, uh, single hand being raised by a woman, and the fact, the good thing about it is she, she kept me in sports, you know, I, I played football, basketball, baseball year round up until, you know, eighth grade, and I think sports, that really helped me stay out of trouble, you know, and my mother was big about that, you know, she was very disciplined, you know, and it, it really, she did a wonderful job. And that's Eunice Smith. Eunice May Smith. Yeah, I call her Mama Smith. Proudly call her Mama yeah. Smith. But you were a pretty good uh, football and baseball player too. Yeah, you know, I was an athlete, an average, you know, football player. I played on, people always laugh because I played on the line in football. I played, <laughs> I played center to be action, to be honest with you. So that's where you got yeah. the toughness from. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. being alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But man, I was, I was real impressed with, uh, with your career. Like I said, I, I saw you play as an eighth grader, and then, I, I mean, I've been around sports, man. I had older sisters that went to school in the school district in the 70s. Well, actually, my older sister graduated, I think, in 1969. So I've been watching athletes, man, play in this community forever. You know, and you y'all have somewhat of a, a basketball talent pipeline. Yeah. You know, with your uh, older cousin, Mookie Smith, who was like one of the best basketball players ever. Yeah, you know, then I don't know if it was somebody before you, but. Uh, uh, it was Mookie. It was Mookie Smith, 79, me, in uh, 1990, then Byron Eaton in 05, and then the last one was LeBron Nash, and was it 11? Yeah, he was he was like that. something like that. Yeah, and I mean, and if people don't understand basketball, that's like basketball royalty, bro. <laughs> yeah. I mean, y'all just came through. When I realized that Mookie Smith was your cousin, I was like, man, because I admired Mookie when I was little league <laughs> playing ball. You know what I'm saying? So watching you grow up, and I saw you play as an eighth grader, but then I saw you when you got to eighth grade at Spruce when you really hit the national scene because you actually played uh, varsity basketball as a freshman. Uh -huh. And how did all that come about? How, you mean, who was your coach? How did he approach oh, you? My coach was really is like my dad, you know, still is like my, like, he's like one of them. I give him so much you know, credit because he, he really helped me out a lot. Coach Val Rose, you mm -hmm. know, he uh, he retired from teaching and everything. And now, you know, he uh, he actually runs the council for the Dallas Barry, but Val Rose, he did so much for me, you know as not just an athlete, but as a student as well, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, he put, he installed some things into me that, I mean, you know, I was blessed to have him part of my life. So he taught you some things that was, was farther, far beyond basketball. It was out, and far it, beyond it, the, his, the perimeters of the court. Famous words, he's like, you think I'm trying to teach y'all to play a game called basketball. I'm trying to teach y'all to play a game called life. And I use that right to this day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, once you, I guess you actually made your mark your sophomore year. Junior. Your junior year, yeah. but your sophomore year, you so, played, yeah, you played yeah. with, you played with some killers your sophomore year. Oh yeah, yeah, my sophomore year, yeah. I had some, you no know, Leslie Booker, I Mo, I mean. Yeah, and they taught you some stuff about basketball. Oh yeah. Yeah, because it wasn't easy to make that Spruce team back then. It wasn't then, easy you know? at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. taught me how to man up in that locker room. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Which is, I mean, because what, what people don't understand is those older athletes become your role models. And they teach you either the bad thing about sports, the good things about sports, they teach you the ins and they teach you the outs. So even the stuff that you don't want to learn, you watching these guys do it and to some degree you're like, man, is that what I should be doing or what I shouldn't be doing? Because you trying to fit in the day world. You a young cat, you know, trying to play on their team and then when they embrace you and they take you under the wing and say, come on, headache, you know, this and that, and then all of a sudden you find yourself in a whole nother world. You know, but then your junior year come and now all of a sudden you got the notoriety because you're showing everybody you can play on the varsity as a young man. So all of a sudden here you are, your junior year, and y'all went, uh, somewhat far in the UIL uh, playoffs in the tournament, huh? Yeah. Uh, like my first three years, we always was a game away. We always made it to Waco, you know, that's like one round the regional, away from whatever. the state. My mm -hmm. senior year, 
we made it to that game. It was one game we lost to Kemper. Okay, okay, okay. So and that was the game to go to state. But the, the good thing about it, each year we lost to the state champion. Oh, okay, so everybody that beat y'all won the state, state championship. Yeah. <laughs> so you got that to hold over the head. I you didn't just lose against the Carl Malone. My friends, I always call me a, a Carl Malone. Because <laughs> <laughs> you never won you a never championship. Won the championship. <laughs> you get close, but you never yeah. win the championship. But you also got a lot of accolades. Uh -huh. I mean, because you were like what? Basketball, I mean, uh, player of the year. Player of the year. Uh -huh. you state of Texas player of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Made the McDonald's game. So uh, I was blessed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you were highly recruited. Yes, sir. You know, how I recruited everybody they wanted me, you. They had me number two point guard in the country behind Anthony Hardaway. And um, I originally committed to UNLV, mm -hmm. but they was getting ready to go on probation. So I decommitted and I chose Arizona State. So during your time when you were coming out, that was like the heyday oh, yeah. of college basketball. Pac-10 was, it was, we had the top guards in the country. You know, mm -hmm. you know, you had Gary Payton, Jason Kidd, Harold Minor. Uh, the was started my career, Reeves, and just been guards coming through the Pac-10, you know, Terrell, Brandon, I mean, it was amazing yeah. competition. And that's when, that was when um, a lot of young talent was really starting to show themselves. It oh, wasn't yeah. a situation where guys were staying in school four years. I mean, they were, they weren't just one and done like oh, they are now, done, but yeah. it was a lot of, it was a lot of, I guess it was a lot of publicity you know, focused on college sports back then because of the NCAA tournament, the NIT, you know, and things like that. So playing at Arizona State, Arizona State wasn't really a basketball school. No, you know, it was a basketball conference. That's what I was trying to know. I mentor train kids, and today I always try to tell them, don't try to go to a school because of the name. Think big. Go to a school where you know you're going to be able to play. And guess what? If you do what you're supposed to do, you can make that, make that school known. Mm -hmm. And that's just what I, you know, did. Nobody knew about Arizona State. You know, it's a right. basketball school. And, you know, I had a new coach, Bill Freer, coming in and there. He had just left Michigan doing the Final Four, so it was a fresh start. And I had four years. And when I left there, I was an all-time lead scorer, all-time lead in the uh, steals, all-time lead three points. You know, I had a lot of records. Your thing, huh? Yeah. So, so how was it um, as far as when you were being recruited, was was Val Rose real instrumental oh, in yes, making your definitely. decision? You know, definitely. and how was Mama Smith when she she was just sitting back saying, "Wherever you want to go to school, so Yeah, yeah, she, you know, of course, she read for me to leave. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she was like, "Just go, go, what?" No, my mom. You know, I think that was the best thing for me was to go off because uh, you know I had to grow up quick. You right. know, because I was small, only child, used to mama being in every game, and you go. Boom, off to Arizona State, hey, mom, can't make that? Yeah. <laughs> every game. Every game, so yeah. she would make one game a year or something like that. It was, you know, it was different. I had to mature very fast. Mm -hmm. And with the help of Al Rose, the, the, the life values that he taught me, you know, the discipline and all that stuff, it helped me survive, you know. And one thing that people have a tendency to forget, you know, Texas and Dallas, Dallas-Fort Worth is a football area. Yeah. But it's huge in basketball. It's huge. You know. Texas used to be known for the, the football state. Now we pretty much, you know, we we, we know our own basketball. We're just good at basketball as we are in football. Yeah, because we produce some athletes. Oh yes, yeah, athletes. You know. in the state of Texas. And with the publicity, man, with I mean, with the magazines and the rankings and the newspaper and stuff like that, being a star athlete in Dallas as a high schooler. It gotta be incredible, man. Especially going through that UIL tournament, the playoffs, the games. You know, I mean, how was it growing up? You know, as a young man playing on that stage in in the city of Dallas. You know, this time I, I tell these kids this all the time. You know, everybody want to be the man, but everybody don't want to do what it takes to be the man. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't buy success. Mm -hmm. You have to. You can't just talk the talk. You have to walk the walk. And I mean, one thing about. Uh, being an advanced athlete, there's a lot of things to go with it, you know. I mean, you gotta have a work ethic, you know, because every time the lights cut on, everybody, you know, coming at you. So you gotta, you, you gotta produce, you know. You got to, you got to not just, you, you got to not just perform, but it's a certain way you have to carry yourself because everybody got their eyes on you. Every, everything you do, somebody watching. 
uneasy lies the heads of the king. That yeah. crown is everybody trying to take that crown. <laughs> everybody. And, and that's something else, man, that, that, you know, like I say, I follow the athletes and I don't just follow athletes seeing them on the court. You know, I talk to people. I always have. And one thing that I heard about you was you had that work ethic, man, that you ran heels and, you know, I don't know how true this is, but you ran heels with tires on your back. And, yeah, well, no, you know. funny is the, <laughs> the strangest thing I did, you know, of course, it was running the heel on 45, but the strange thing I did is I used to get my mama car and put it in neutral and push it up a little hill on our street. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, because you wanted to be the best. Yes, sir. And like you say, everybody want to be the man, but everybody, nobody, not everybody wants to do what it takes. You know, nobody wants to practice after practice. Nobody wants to eat right. Nobody wants to do the extra push-ups and the extra sit-ups, shoot a hundred jumpers, yeah, shoot a, you I'll, know, the free throws. I always tell them, only, the only way you're gonna get good is when you do your homework on your time. Not when at practice, not when you go on the skills. It's when you do it on your time. When you have free time and you're doing something extra, that's when you get good. Because yeah. somebody else is out there working on theirs. Exactly. And somebody else, somebody's at home laying up looking at TV. Yep. And then when the two come together, that cat that's laying on the couch looking at TV, uh, oh, you're going to use yeah, him. I tell you what, that was one of my, my, one of my biggest things is I used to always say, I can't get better than the next person working out at the same time. So I was at 4 o'clock a.m., man. I will always get up early. That's the only way I know I get ahead. It's why they sleep and I'm working. And then at night, while they up late, I'm already going to sleep because I got to get up early. Yeah, yeah. That's my man, Stephen Headache Smith. Remember, get up early. Because <laughs> while everybody else sleeping, you can already be putting in the work and you're ahead of the game. Yeah. You heard it here on Man Up with Mark T, the voice of victory. We're going to take a break and we're going to come back. So y'all sit down, get you something to drink, get you some chips, and come back because you don't want to miss the rest of this. We'll be back. Walking into a fantastic clean office. Or coming home to a fantastic clean home. Hi, my name is LaMonica, CEO and founder of Fantastic Four Cleaning Services, providing fantastic services for you because that's what we aim to do. Give me a call at the office at 469-730-3054. Welcome back to Man Up with Mark T on Dads and Fathers TV. Hey, glad to have y'all here. I got my man, Stephen Head A. Smith, playground legend. We're talking about his life and his life story. And uh, thank you, man, once again for coming out, bro. I mean, I appreciate you. You know, I, I, I consider you family and you like a little brother to me. And uh, a lot of people don't actually know. Uh, well, I take that back. Everybody know you. You know what I'm saying? Everybody know you. I mean, you've been around it and you did your thing and you went on to uh, play collegially, play professionally, you know, but you also represented the United States uh, with the in the world games or something like that. So explain to me what, what happened with that. Uh, my, at the end of my junior year, I, I went to a trial. It was in Chicago and it was like 150 of us. And when I got there, I'm these like, are college basketball all players. All college, yes, all college basketball players. I got there, I was like, man, what is this? I'm like, hey, USA. Okay, so we did a little play and everything, played well. And um, went back and it was like, you know, hey, you got to make, you got to bat it back to the top 20 down in Lawrence, Kansas, University of Kansas campus. And um, went there, Rob Williams was going to be the head coach. He's in North Carolina now. He was going to be the head coach of the team, Jim Calhoun. Who retired from Connecticut? He was you know, the assistant. Mm -hmm. So I get there. I'm like, man, we're there with players from Eddie Jones from Temple, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Steve Woodbury from Kansas, Georgetown players, Syracuse, Adrian Archer. Do anybody you see it on TV? Yeah. So got there, got the plan. Next thing you know, I was blessed enough to make the team. Not only did I make the team, I was a leading scorer, and we won the gold medal. And you were the captain of the team. Captain of the team, yes, sir. I mean, because, man, basketball is, is something that I, I understood that, like, uh, I mean, I guess about two years ago, I used to always do, you know, I do special events, and I used to always do track meets. Yeah. And I saw these kids, man, outside playing. I mean, it was, like, cold. And they were outside playing basketball. And I realized right then that basketball is like a subculture. Yeah. I mean, kids love playing basketball. Oh, yeah. And everybody think they can play. Yeah. 
you know, when you're just sitting around, everybody think they can shoot, everybody think they can dribble, but basketball is an art form. Yeah. So when you go on the road and all of a sudden you find yourself in the best of the best, you really have to challenge yourself both physically and mentally. How was it, man, being in that scene with those athletes? Here you are, you, you, Stephen Smith. Now I know, you know, you the man, right? You know, you, you were the man in high school. You were man. You didn't always been the man, but all of a sudden, you here with the same catch when you sit in your room. You seeing them on TV, you know. You know, Mark, to be honest with you, that right there is like it was perfect timing because I can remember like yesterday. Uh, Coach George McCoy, he was a sister coach. As a matter of fact, his daughter Tracy Edmonds. Okay. Uh, her father, he sat me down and he said something to me that took not only my game to another level, he took me to another level. Because he, he asked me, he said, Hey, why do you play the game of basketball? I said, Because I love it. He said, Going to your junior year, your love for the game has got you, you know, this far. He said, now, I want you to do something for me, and it's going to take you places you've never been before in your life. I said, what's that? He said, don't play the game because you love it. He said, play the game for a reason. He said, who's real special to you? And that was my first tattoo. My mom, I put on my arm, doing it for EMS. He said, play this game for your mom and watch what it do for you. And my junior year, I led the Pac-10 and scored. Went to the USA Trials, made the team, led it, and uh, led the team to score. Was the captain. It's just like my game took off because when you think about it. What do we? You know, most kids they play the game because they love. It. Play it for a reason. Every time I thought about quitting, uh, uh, every time things didn't go right, I went even harder because I wasn't doing it for love. I was doing it for my mother. Mm -hmm. And that right there, when I got there to that to that top twenty, I mean. I, all I have on my head is for my mama. And I know what she done for me and how important she was to me. So good things happen because I just went out there and played my heart out. And, and, and let me kind of elaborate on that. The thing that that coach did for you was he developed the why in your life. Yeah. You know, why do you get up in the morning? Why do you train? Why do you eat like you do? Why do you? And that's what everybody has to have. Gotta you know, everybody, when you wake up in the morning, you got to ask yourself, why I'm getting out of bed today? Why can't I sleep in tonight? Why am I working extra? You know what I'm saying? Why am I driving over here? It's the why in your life that determines your success and your failure. If you're not looking at the why, and you're not developing the why in your life, then you really don't have a purpose. You just like, like, oh, well, you know what? You know, it's the why in, our, in all of our lives, man. We got kids, that's why we do it. We got family, that's why we do it. We got love for it, that's why we do it. Everything in our life is developed and is produced by the why. If you wake up in the morning, you don't have no why, you gonna get back in the bed. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you gonna be like, you know what? Let me let me watch some more of this. You know, this Jerry Springer. You know, let me watch some more of this Judge Mathis. You're not gonna wake up and get out the bed. The hardest thing for a lot of people to do is walk out that door every morning with a purpose. And how do you develop a purpose in your life? You know, you um, had an opportunity to play D1 basketball. So many kids dream about that. You know, opportunity to play uh, professionally and play all over the world. You know, and a lot of people don't know the story of how you and I met. And we met when um, I was working at a security contract at the Cowboys Cafe. And that's where a lot of, I think, every professional athlete is actor, yeah. you know, came through those doors. And uh, you came through, you know, doing your playing time and you were with all the other professional athletes. And it was one night, man, I know it was probably about three o'clock in the morning, and athletes would leave a little, either y'all would leave early before the crowd or y'all would leave after. And um, I came in and I was trying to get everybody out, and I said, and I don't think you knew I knew you, and I said, hey, I said, hey, man, go on, get your boys out of here because I got something else to do. <laughs> you looked at me and you laughed. You said, hey, man, let's go, man. The sheriff got something else to do. <laughs> you know, then after a while, we started, hey, hey, come on, you can come in, this and that, and then I asked you. I said, hey, man, I'm giving a basketball camp. Yep. I want you to come. You say, Sheriff, just let me know when and where. And I said, okay. I gave you the date at the park. Park Southside. We were doing it with Hoop Hunt. Yeah, here with Hoop Hunt, yeah. You know, and all of a sudden, like, probably we started at 9, probably about 10.30. 
you walk through the door with Samaki Walker. Y'all didn't just come through, just coming through. Y'all came with a big basket, with a big uh, bag full of t-shirts and shoes and this and that. And man, I always admired that because I asked you to come and I asked you to come one time. I didn't get your number and I didn't have to text you and hey man, you coming, you know this and that. And you showed me right then you were a man of your word. But the thing that was most impressive to me was because at that camp, man, we had you, Samaki Walker, Derek Batte, Tony Batte, we had Jeff Full and we had Chet Brooks. And all of us were, you know, high school athletes. And all of, all, all of y'all came just because I asked you. But you were the only one out of all of those guys, when y'all got up to talk, you laid on the floor with the kids, you told them to sit down. And you taught them good, better, best. Never, never ever rest, rest till your good, good gets better, better and your better gets better. Gets better. <laughs> guess, what I named, guess what I named my basketball skills training? Good, G better. GBB. Yeah. Good, better, best skills training. Because you're going to come to me good. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make you better. And when I get through with you, you're gonna be it's your best. best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And where did you get that from? Oh man, got it from Alex Mud Gillum, man. Yeah, yeah. And you know, Coach Gillum is, you know, Legend. a legendary Die. coach. Uh -huh. I mean, people had so much respect for that guy. Mm -hmm. You know, if he told you something, you could take it to the bank. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I think that that was something that I don't think I know. That's something that I see that kids see in you, because so many kids come up, Coach had a. You know, hey, hey, you know, I did this today, I did that today, and then you ask them something. You don't just say, okay, good job. You ask them something that takes their game, you extend their game. Did you do this? Did you do that? You know, I follow you on Twitter. You know, I got that arrested development, so I ain't <laughs> just all, you know, social networking like that, but I finally followed you on Twitter, and I see how many kids you keep in contact with through that, through that Twitter. How is it, man, with you taking what you learned as a young man, single parent, being raised by your mom, being influenced by a coach, being influenced, always being younger, playing with older kids, get, having to be influenced by older kids, then becoming the older guy that you had to bring some other kids along, going to college, being out on your own, and then all of a sudden now you're coming home and you're not just sitting back saying, I'm a headache, I'm a legend. But you get up every day and you teach kids, you inspire kids. I mean, how did all that come about? <laughs> it's funny that you ask because you're the one that got me into that, you know. Uh, when I would be going overseas playing and when I'd be home, you know, my big thing was I always had, had it, you know where you came from, you know what you've been through, man. You got to give back. And, you know, being around you at those camps and with those kids, it's just, man, it, it just takes me to another level because it give you life. Yeah, because I always, I, I always say, man, if I had this, I can just imagine where I would have been. Like they got these skills training that I, we didn't have that back in our day. You know, <laughs> it's it's so for me, Mark. I mean, everybody, you know, you know how you. I think about how I was, you know, coming up and everything. Everybody don't have that that contact or that relationship with somebody that's the been there. Because you know, my biggest thing is, you can't expect nobody to take you somewhere like they ain't been. Okay, and I know in this game that I played at the highest level, and I know it's a lot of kids out there, like, you know, I always preach to them, I say, hey, listen, use this game, be a student athlete, don't be a basketball player. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Use this game to get your education paid for. Yeah. Now, if you special, you have a chance to make money playing this game. But do not put all your eggs in this game because you have to understand it is a game. Mm -hmm. And all games do what? Come to an end. But one thing about the education, that's going to be with your turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because now you got something that allows you to do more than, I mean, it's just like what you do. Now you got a training program yes. in which you train young athletes. Mm -hmm. That comes from your education in basketball. Yeah. You I'm know, and the, another game. Yeah, and the thing that you said was if you're special, you know, see that word "if" is in the middle of life. That's real, Mark. <laughs> you know? Because you know? everybody, everybody wants to be LeBron James. <laughs> hey, yeah. It will be too many more about LeBron James. You know, and you know, Mark. What's what's funny is you know, I I say this and I mean it from the heart. You know, everything in life happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. They say hey, they, if you had to do it all over again, what would you have done different? I say, you really want to know the truth? They say, yeah. 
I said I would have finished and got my degree. Mm -hmm. Because when the game was over, I couldn't go right back, no, right into coaching like I wanted to because I still had a task that I didn't finish. Mm -hmm. So to me, if, if, I, if I had to do it, I probably wouldn't have played pro basketball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I would have got into teaching because it's more, I mean, that that being that, that, that athlete mark, it's a lot to come with that. Yeah. And now that I'm 43, I'm more mature, more wise, I think, I look at myself, I should be, I should have been in high school coaching the Spruce in my 20th season, you know, 401k, yeah. enjoying life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Versus, you know, of course I enjoyed it, you know, that, that moment. Yeah. You know, I... Because I, you played, I mean, you played oh, yeah, I played 16 years. Yeah, 16 I years. I enjoyed yeah, that yeah, moment, yeah. you know, but of course I didn't have surgery on both knees, my knees popping, all that. I mean, that's not worth it. Yeah, yeah. If I was saying in them glory days, I mean, I can tell the kid, you would get more out of life getting that job, getting that 401k versus athlete. Because one thing about being a professional athlete that you don't understand, you one play away. You one play away from your career being over. You never know what's going to be, only God knows that. But one major injury, it's over. Yeah, yeah. And see, and you know, and I, uh, you know, I learned so much about basketball from sitting next to you at the game, mm -hmm. you know, and laughing about, you know, I, you know, I know I asked you a lot of questions, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. you know, but you, you, would, you would tell me things like you see a kid that's jumped too high on his jumper, you say he gonna turn his knees up, yeah. you know, you see a kid that, you know, he, he, he shuffles the wrong way, you say he gonna tear up those Achilles. There's so many things that you spot that comes with the wear and tear of being an athlete. And that's why people don't really understand that one and done, uh, uh, the, the phenomenon about the one and done. But if you get a kid that's 19, that can play against professional athletes, his upside is tremendous. Because when you become a college athlete, it ain't no joke. You live, eat, drink, sleep, basketball. basketball. You don't have no me time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because they, it's about championships yeah. now. You know, and it ain't just about conference championships. It's about getting into that tournament. It's about getting into that Sweet 16, that Elite Eight. Coaches you got know? bonuses right. They gonna do whatever they gotta do to make sure you you right. Yeah, and so and a lot of people see the, the the fame and the fortune, and they see the glamour, but they don't really understand you know what it actually takes. But the thing that I like about you is you're humble with it, because you're not a guy that's gotta say. Uh, man, I did this, I did that. I mean, you can simply say, Google me, you know, and, <laughs> and they can see what's up. That's, that's, you know? <laughs> like, hey, why you don't, you know, hey, let me get you, why you don't have no car, you know, for your train, it's not like. Because <laughs> they come to you. Word of mouth, man, yeah. because if I give you a car, come here, it's like, hey, I, I don't want you. No, you can't, you can't charge, you can't say the word, you know. I only like, like I always tell them, man, the ones, I got all this knowledge right here. If you don't ask me, how am I going to know what to tell you? But I'm, I'm going to tell you something, too, and, and I said that you do a lot because of what you learn basketball. But like I talked about, you know, your basketball pedigree in your family. Mookie Smith took you around with him, you know, and he taught you the game, not just on the basketball, but how to be an athlete, being around athletes, this and that. You reached back and you took Byron Eaton around and you took him around and you taught him because, you know, I write for the newspaper, been writing for the Elite News, and when I did the story on Byron Eaton, and you know, it was like, man, you gotta go see this kid, this and that. And my question was always, who's your favorite athlete? You know, and cats would be like Kobe and you know, this and that. He said, my uncle. Oh, he said, my cousin. And I said, who's your cousin? He said, Stephen, that ain't Smith. And I started laughing and when I got through, I called. He said, yeah, that's my little cousin. And you said, man, I don't even talk to him about basketball. No. I talk to him about life because he gonna get that shot. And I need him to understand everything that comes with it. So what you doing, when you point into these young people's lives, it ain't just so they can be a good athlete, it's so that they can be a good person. Because life is gonna throw some stuff at you. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. and it's more about basketball because we've seen so many kids, you know, that all of a sudden he playing today he got a baby tomorrow. Oh. You know, he playing today, he in jail tomorrow. And you know, and it's hurtful, man, especially when you talk to a kid, mentor a kid, and you see what's happening with him when he, he go down that wrong path. Oh, man, as you know, I, I tell I preach this. I preach this to him daily, Lord. I always tell him, don't be a victim of society. Like, hey, coach, what you mean? I said, guess what? 
One thing about us, we can run, jump, shoot. We can do it all on that court. We Americans, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. But the biggest problem is off the court. Mm -hmm. That's our biggest problem. Everybody get caught up some kind of way, no matter how you look at them. And once you're caught up, you become that victim of society. Uh, he used to be cold. Uh, he could have did this. He could have did that. Could have did this. You ain't got God in your life and you're doing the right thing. It's going to be hard because there's an athlete just as good as you with less problems. See, these cats these days, they, they want to stay, they have luggage. Mm -hmm. And that's what these schools be looking at. These colleges be looking at. Hey, okay, you know he can do all this. There's a reason why he ain't got nobody looking at him. Right. They tell me the bad part. Oh, man, he got two kids, man. Uh, you know, he smoke a little weed, this and that. Yeah. That goes, it's got to shit. And that's, that's the reality to this game. Because like you said, get your school paid for. But what people don't understand, man, that college scholarship is that six figures. That's, six figures. <laughs> that's the first major contract you sign. When you sign that national yeah. of intent, you get a place to stay, you get food, you get clothes, you get school. I mean, man, you know. Check. Yeah, <laughs> when I went to when I went to college, I'm talking about they got two pair of shoes in the locker. Waiting on you. Um, you know, warm up stuff, stuff you got yeah. to wear. You ain't got to wash it. You hey, take it off, put hey, it in the, the bag. You got, you know? After practice, you got food. You got a, a spread laid out. You know, yeah. Marriott training table. You got tutors for every subject. Yeah. Man, it's it's huge. I mean, it's a huge investment to put on the kid mm -hmm. to say, we counting on you because that school where they might be paying you six figures, they making seven. And probably some hey, you yeah. know what I'm saying? You know, I mean, because Arizona State wasn't just no joke for a school. They were selling them stadiums out. It's one of the largest universities in the world, Mark. You know, man. You know that? It's one of the top five largest universities in the world. Yeah, and they fans come to watch them Sunday. Oh, yeah. I got know. a new stadium, matter of fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, man, you know, it's, uh, like I say, I, I just appreciate everything that you do, man. I appreciate watching you from a young kid, man, shooting threes, you know, watching your ESPN to, you know, you coming home. And like you said, man, when we started doing those camps, I remember one time, man, I think you were playing in Russia, bro. Yeah. You got off the plane and you said, Mark, where is the meeting? And I said, well, hey, hey, you been home yet? He said, no, man, y'all yeah. coming to the meeting. I said, bro, go see your family. Hey, yeah. <laughs> go no, get your hair cut. No, you no, know. It's a mad, it's a mad, no, man, you just said that. Because I was just thinking about the other day, the camps that me and you've had, Mark, and some of the people we've had to come to Baker Sands. Like, we've had Primetime, Deion Sanders come yeah. down. We had Mark Jones come talk yeah. to us. They had Kirk Thomas. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you just named We done had them all come to the camps, you know, yeah, we had great turnouts. Yeah, and even the even the, the talent, uh -huh. you know, with the young athletes that have gone on and we go back on Tuesday night, Thursday night and watching them play and then when they see us in the they see us in the stand, they come up, shake our hands. Yeah. You know, and all of a sudden we can say proud of you son. You know, but the greatest thing was, you know, when we used to have a three-point shootout and they used to challenge you yeah. and couldn't nobody <laughs> out shoot you, you know. So my question is, now that you're 43, bro, can you still shoot the jump? I made 38 in a row just last night in skills. The guy was trying to. Okay, we're going to take a break. <laughs> you know, that's what I need to know, if you can still shoot the jumper. So anybody want to challenge my man? Now, I'm talking about Steph Curry and all that. Okay, he might be the next one. Before there was Steph Curry, it was Stephen Headache Smith. And he's here with us today on Man Up with Mark T, the voice of victory on dadsandfathers.tv. Y'all take a minute, take a break, and we're going to be back. We're going to finish this thing up. We'll be back. No gimmicks. No fake stupid conversations. Just real talk and real help from a real lawyer. If you've been injured in a car accident, I'm sure you're worried about transportation, medical bills, lost wages, and getting real compensation for your pain and suffering. I'm attorney Roderick White, and if you want real answers to your car wreck questions and real help with your car wreck problems, call me at 214 or 817. I got you. Welcome back, welcome back, man. Over with Mark T, the voice of victory on dadsandfathers.tv. Man, it's been a great show with my man, Stephen Headache Smith. You know, Headache, before we get out of here, man, I, I just want you to, you know, just tell people, where where have you played in your career? Where, if you can remember, <laughs> where have you played? Uh, I've played, um, I played in France, 
I played France like five years. I played in Russia three years. Uh, I was in Italy. I played in Turkey, Israel, Bulgaria, Philippines. Uh, put like this, I went through two passports, the 48 page passports. <laughs> wow, man, because I, I remember one time, man, I was in the courthouse and I got this phone number and it had like 15 numbers on it. And, you know, and I was like, hello, because I'm thinking it's a bill collector or somebody. And you say, it's the great one. And I started laughing. You know, and I was like, man, where you at? And, you know, you were you in some country, you know, but that just goes to show that, uh, like you were talking about the if in basketball. You know, basketball or athletic sports will guarantee you some things. It'll guarantee you that you're going to meet some great people. It'll guarantee you're going to make some great friends. It'll guarantee you that you're going to get a chance to compete. But it's going to also guarantee you that you're going to travel and you're going to see some things. Oh, yeah. You know, so you just got to use it for what it's for. And, man, I'm real thankful to, to see the young man that you've grown up to be and see uh, how you are affecting people's lives, you know, because as you say, you know, we, we had the opportunity to uh, found the NOW program. And the oh, NOW program is a, is a new uh, student athletes mentoring program which stands for No Opportunities Wasted. And I talked to you uh, overseas and I said, man, when you come home, I want you to help me in this venture. And you said, man, count me in. And you, when you retire and you hit the ground running. And now we've seen kids, I mean, we got so many kids, man, that are playing college basketball. You know, a couple of them are playing pro basketball. Uh, we kids that have been boys and girls that have been MVP of our eighth grade basketball game that went on to play in the uh, in the McDonald's All-American game. And one thing that I like about you is your constant contact with these kids. And just explain to me a little bit how you affect the kids' lives, you know, with Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I go on Twitter and I always try to uh, send out a message, you know, tell them, hey, you know, it's another day to get better, you know, thank God, you know, you know I, I always just try to send them a quote or something, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I inbox and text them, you know, tweet some of them, I know this in school, hey, how you doing? And they, I saw your stats, you know, hey, you know, good job, just try to motivate them. Let them know that you watch it. Exactly. You know, so don't get, don't, don't slip on your game because, you know, coach watching. Oh, yeah, I got my yeah. eyes on it. Because <laughs> I know I, it was one tweet that you sent out of, uh, what have you done to make your game better? Exactly. You know, and I started laughing and I say, well, my boy's still dropping yeah. that knowledge, you I know. Because you know, that's real. I always tell about it. If you, if you're serious about this game, you got to be able to look yourself in the mirror and answer. You got to be able to ask yourself a question and answer it. What did I do today to better myself in this game called basketball? If you cannot answer, if you get some extra uh, exercise, ways, you, you watch video, you have to have done something. Mm -hmm. Read a book, uh, basketball 101, it's something you got to do. That's if you're serious about it. And, and like a lot of people just don't really understand the impact that basketball has not only on the kids but also on the parents because you have a lot of kids man we see so many kids because you grew up without your father i grew up without my father we have so many kids that when they start playing this game of basketball and we start mentoring them we speaking directly to their mothers exactly. and a lot of times you got to give them the reality of ma'am you know he's not yeah, that good. good you know yeah. what i'm saying oh, ma'am he's good but he dumb, you know, and, and it's not being hard, it's being real so that you, I'd rather you hear it from me than then you hear it from somebody that don't look like me and then you saying, oh, he prejudiced, he racist, but he trying so hard to get you this you know, money. Mark, I came up with a little new, new little quote, Mark, and it's so real, you know, I actually, I had a, I had one as well, the person I trained his son, he's like, you know, hey, they, what you said is true. I just want you to understand this. And when he said it, Mark, the first thing I did, my thing, oh man, that's, that's kind of racist. But when I thought about it, it was so real. He said, you know, it ain't the difference. He's an Armenian guy. He said, it ain't no difference between us and y'all. Y'all raise y'all kids to try to be, make it to the NBA, the NFL. Whereas we raise our kids to take over. Our business. Mm -hmm. I just want my son to be able to compete because I told him I say, 
all it takes is all you got. If you won't give all you got, you don't have what it takes. You know, I'm trying to tell him, hey, son, hey, you know, explore, you don't want to work hard, this and that. He said, hey, I pay you just to teach him how to make it tough. Yeah. That's all yeah. I want out of it. We're not <laughs> worrying about, you know, getting no scholarship and this and that. He gonna take over my business. But since he liked the game, since he liked at least game. make it work. Can't nobody just handle him every day. Yeah, it is. You know where yeah. he can compete. You know because I remember we had a camp with uh, Val Rose, uh -huh. and you know we had probably a hundred kids there, and the kids up at the top, top was talking. talking and he you told know, them, he said, "Yeah." I mean, if Val was like dribbling between his legs and just dropping them pearls, right? Yeah. And he said, "You know what the problem with with y'all?" He said, "I get paid a hundred dollars an hour." to coach kids that don't even look like you over in North Dallas that wish they, they had, had the tower that you got. And he's saying, you know, they'll be successful before you because of one thing, because you won't listen. <laughs> and yeah, I was I like, man. That, that big, yeah, and I was like, like man. man. He was like that, but that is true. Yeah. And he'd be doing those Mary camps. He'd be like, hey, they, man, they pay like this, this, like this. He's like, but they don't have a chance. But bro, look at it. Talent is common but it's wasted every day. Every day. Think about how many kids that grew up with us that said he could have been something, he wasted his talent. That was what you were just speaking on earlier. Don't waste your talent, make the most of it. If you can dribble, if you can jump, if you can shoot, parlay that into getting your school paid for. Parlay that into you, instead of you living in Dallas from 18 to 22, be living in, uh, Chicago or something. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Walk you know, to school. Yeah, <laughs> use that as a teach way for the next for four years. That's like that's one of the things with the now program that we teach. Get a plan from 18 to 22. Mm -hmm. What you gonna be doing? If you can't go to school and play basketball, get you a trade. If you can't get a trade, go to the military. But don't yeah. just be sitting around here doing nothing. You know, talking about, well, I should have, I could have, you know, well, you still can and you still should. <laughs> and you need to be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, man, it, it, it's like I say, it, it's been an honor, man, just being your friend and the way our friendship has, has promoted and progressed the brotherhood. So, I really like how you affect people's lives, you know, because there's two things that we can do in our existence. We can affect people's lives or we can infect people's lives. And when you infecting people's lives, you making them sick, man. You killing them. But when you affect their lives, you giving them hope. You know, you giving them life, and you putting them on the path to be successful, and you giving them something that a lot of people don't give them. You give them encouragement. You know, like I spoke about the caterpillar. So many people squash kids' dream. Boy, you ain't gonna be nothing. But to have somebody come in their life and say, "You got something, son. You got to work on it." You got some because you right now, you train two, you don't just train boys, you train some of the best female athletes in, that the city has to offer too, don't you? Uh -huh. you no, know, yeah. So, just in closing, man, because we're going to, you know, go, because I'm going to have you back you know, a few more times as, as we progress with the show. But what would you tell kids, parents, athletes that aspire to be, people that are growing up playing this game, what would you tell them? Have heart knowing that heart stands for had enough and refuse to quit. And anything you do, have heart. Had enough and refuse to quit. Yeah, 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 I like that, I like that. <laughs> you know, and hey, that's my man, Stephen Headache Smith. And like I say, I'm bringing people from the community to man up with me so that I can become the man that I'm supposed to be in the community and I use the resources that I have with him. So if you have any kids, you know, that need mentoring, you know, athletic mentoring, just basic mentoring, you know, call us, you know, because the goal for this program and the goal for this show is for us to reach a million men. That's all? Well, <laughs> we're looking at it like this. If we reach a million men, Ooh. they gonna have a, a mate. So that puts us at two million. Yep. They gonna have a kid that puts us at three million. Got a point. You know, so hopefully they'll have three, four kids and we'll get up to ten million before that, it's over. Yeah, yeah. But all we want them to do is join in with us, dadsandfathers.tv. Allow us to build the resources. Check out this network because there are a lot of people that are having shows, that are giving events, that are producing things that can help you. And all we want to do is just give you the resources to help you in all aspects of your life. We gonna change the game. Never forget, never despise the day of small beginning. 
the acorn was once just the, uh, I keep messing it up, dog. The oak tree. Oak tree. The oak tree. See, I don't have to do no editing, bro. I just let it go and go. The oak tree <laughs> was once a small seed that people just kicked around. Once it become an oak tree, I bet you won't kick that bad boy. You know, so hey, thank y'all for joining in. Remember, every Thursday night, 8 o'clock, you can check out my man's interview. And you can go back and record and check out all the shows that are on Dad's and Father's TV. I appreciate Mike Michaels for what he's done and what he's created. Join in with us with this movement, y'all. You know, Man Up with Mark T is not just a talk show. It's a movement. So we'll see y'all next time. May God bless you. Peace and a long life. Hey, hi, this is Michael with Dad's Father's TV Network. Wanted to take a quick moment with the celebrity, the man himself, Mr. Mark T. Brother, it's been a while since we've done anything together. Hey, what's up, Mike? Hey, man, I was watching the last show you just did there. Man, it's, it's always a privilege to see good quality men doing positive thing, and I appreciate you being on the network when I quest to reach a million fathers in 2016. So what I like to do is invite all you men to have a friend, to tell a friend, to tell a brother, to tell an uncle, to tell a dad. Now, you have a resource. I mean, with Man Up and Dad's Father's TV Network, that now that journey to being a happy, great father, you don't have to go alone. I mean, between the both of us, we're over a century old, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, give them your little 30 seconds of fame, because you got so much wisdom there, about how they should join our journey for a million man to success. Well, I appreciate Mike having me on Dad's and Father's uh, TV. It's our quest to reach a million men. And we got a lot of resources that are going to be on this network. So we ask that you tune in, have somebody to tune in, tell somebody about us. It's about mentoring people. Right. If each one teach one, then we reach one. So all we want is for everybody to, to come together. I'll help Mike. Mike will help me. We'll help you. And we'll make a difference. And we'll have an opportunity to change the game in the world, in the Metroplex, and just right in your home. So tune in. Dads and Fathers TV. Man Up with Mark T. Michael Michaels get his book. He has a lot of good information in there, and we're connected with a lot of good people that are going to be doing a lot of good things. Because, hey, ultimately our goal is to minimize the number of family violence that's due to visitation exchange. Most people don't realize that is a very deadly exchange when emotions are involved. Uh, being a father of uh, uh, four children, I had the unfortunate pleasure, but now the privilege of knowing that challenge between an emotional parent's exchanging a child, that becomes deadly with a blink of an eye. I mean, so our quest is not just to get you to tune in, but we want you to better yourselves to be fathers because victory over visitation is one step at a time. It's acknowledging you first have to better yourself before you can even learn how to communicate with what they call baby mama or the mother of your child or ex-wife. So victory over visitation comes with let us all grow together as one, one million strong. We appreciate you. Catch you next week.